Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. This is Nikta Mahapatra and today I will be talking about what is a company and what are the characteristics of a company. The word company has no strict technical or legal meaning. It may be described to imply an association of persons for some common object or objective. The purposes for which people may associate themselves are multifarious and include economic as well as non-economic objectives. But in common parlance, the word company is normally reserved for those associated for economic purposes, that is to carry on business for a gain. Now, what are the characteristics of a company? Characteristic, the most important characteristic features of a company are separate legal entity of the company and in most cases limited liability of its members. These and other characteristic features of the company will be discussed in, the, in this video. First, Incorporated Association A company must be incorporated or registered under the Companies Act. Minimum number of members required for this purpose is 7 in the case of a public company and 2 in the case of a private company as specified in Section 3 of the Companies Act. However, Section 3 of the Companies Act also allows formation of one person company also. Second, legal entity distinct from its members. Unlike partnership, the company is distinct from the members who constitute it. Hence, it is capable of enjoying rights and of being subjected to duties which are not the same as those enjoyed or borne by its members. In the famous case of Solomon vs. Solomon, it was held the company is at law a different person altogether from the subscribers. And though it may be that after incorporation, the business is precisely the same as it was before and the same person are managers and the same hands receive the proceeds, the company is not in law the agent of the subscribers or trustee for them. Nor are the subscribers as members liable in any shape or form except to the extent and in the manner provided by the Act. In the case of Kondoli T Co Limited Ray, it was held, the company was a separate person, a separate body altogether from the shareholders and the transfer was as much a conveyance, a transfer of the property as if the shareholders had been totally different persons. In the case of K.S. Motilal versus K.S. Kastimari Ceramic, it was held, a shareholder is an investor and he will be entitled to participate in the profits of the company in which he holds shares as and when the company declares, subject to articles of association, and the profits or portion thereof should be distributed by way of dividends among the shareholders and that part the shareholder has got a further right to participate in the assets of the company which would be left over after winding up but not in the assets as a whole. Third, artificial person. The company through a juristic, though a juristic person does not possess the body of a natural being. It exists only in contemplation of law. Being an artificial person, it has to depend upon natural persons, namely the directors, officers and shareholders, etc. for getting its work done. However, these individuals only represent the company and accordingly, whatever they do within the scope of the authority conferred upon them and in the name and on behalf of the company, they bind the company and not themselves. Fourth, limited liability. One of the principal advantages of trading through the medium of a limited company is that the members of the company are only liable to contribute towards payment of its debt to a limited extent. If the company is limited by shares, the shareholder's liability to contribute is measured by the nominal value of the shares he holds so that once he or someone who held the shares pre previously has paid that nominal value plus any premium agreed on when the shares was issued, he is no longer liable to contribute anything further. However, companies may be performed with unlimited liability of members or members may guarantee a particular amount. In such cases, liability of the members shall not be limited to the nominal or face value of their shares and the premium, if any, unpaid thereon. 
in the case of unlimited liability companies members shall continue to be liable till each money or each amount has been paid out fifth separate property shareholders are not in the eyes of law part owners of the undertaking in india this principle of separate property was best laid down by the supreme court in bacha f guzdar versus cit the supreme court held that a shareholder is not the part owner of the company or its property he is only given certain rights by law for example to vote or attend meetings or to receive dividends six transferability of shares one particular reason for the popularity of joint stock companies has been that their shares are capable capable of being easily transferred the companies act in section 44 echoes this feature by declaring the shares debentures or other interest of any member in a company shall be movable property transferable in the manner provided by in the articles of the company a shareholder can transfer his shares to any person without the consent of other members of the company articles of association even of a public company can put certain restrictions on the transfer of shares but it cannot altogether stop it perpetual succession a company being an artificial person cannot be incapacitated by illness and it does not have an allotted span of life being distinct from the members the death insolvency or retirement of its members leaves the company unaffected members may come and go but the company goes on forever if continue even if continue even if all its human members are dead even during the war all the members of a private company while in general meeting were killed by a bomb the company survives eighth common seal a company being an artificial person is not bestowed with a body of a natural being therefore it does not have a mind or limbs of human being it has to work through the agency of human beings namely the directors and other officers and employees of the company the common seal is a seal used by a corporation and this as the symbol of its incorporation as per section 22 as amended by the companies amendment act 2015 a company may under its common seal if any through general or special power of attorney empower any person to execute deeds on its behalf in any place either in or outside india it further provides that a deed signed by such an attorney on behalf of the company and under his seal where sealing is required shall bind the company these were the most common characteristics of a company thank you so much for watching and see you in another video